In tonight's State Line Defense, Israel claims a nightmare scenario is coming true. A former Israeli defense minister says chemical weapons from Syria are trickling into the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah. It's the first such claim by a senior politician in Israel. Meanwhile, some U.S. lawmakers want President Obama to pursue a stronger military response there. For more, we turn to our guest tonight on Capital Insider, Matthew Brodsky, Director of, the, uh, Director of Policy for the Jewish Policy Center. Matt, tell us more about the former defense minister. Why is his claim significant? Ben, ben Eliezer's claim is significant is that it falls on the heels of a brigadier general from Israel, Itai Brun, who had said last week that the Israeli intelligence estimates say that chemical weapons had been used in Syria. And that also came on the heels of France, Britain, and uh, Qatar also saying that chemical weapons had been used. So this is why the White House then last week came out and said that there were a, at least a small amount of chemical weapons that had been used. It's also significant because Israel has made a, uh, a, a red line itself that it will not tolerate the transfer of weapons either extremely uh, sophisticated anti-aircraft weapons or weapons of mass destruction to Hezbollah or to Jabhat al-Nusra, which is a terrorist group uh, aligned with al-Qaeda fighting in Syria. So whether or not the United States decides that it's going to act, Israel has a red line and it will act to protect its interests as it did earlier in the year when it bombed uh, weapons that were in Syria, <coughs> anti-aircraft weapons, but they were bound for Hezbollah. Last week, the White House said U.S. intelligence indicates Assad twice used deadly chemical weapons. Today, Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel said U.S. officials are still assessing what happened exactly and what's going to go, what's happening here. What you're witnessing is the dialing back of the rhetoric from, uh, from the administration. What you're basically, in essence, this is the administration doesn't really want to do anything about uh, Syria crossing the red line. And so they're going to set a bar that is impossible to reach when it comes to uh, having proof for chemical weapons being used. That bar is going to be a UN investigation into the use of chemical weapons inside Syria. But of course, there's already been a, uh, a team assembled and they've been sitting in Cyprus since March. And of course, Assad is not going to let them into the country to investigate. So this is a way that the administration can say we do not have uh, definitive proof to say that chemical weapons have been used. Now, this is despite the fact that in July of last year, a foreign ministry spokesman who worked for the Assad regime and still does, came out and said that they have chemical weapons and they would be used if, if they had to use them. President Obama faces intense political pressure from some lawmakers and members of his own administration. Here's Senator John McCain on NBC's Meet the Press. Uh, we have said that they need a no-fly zone, which could be obtained without using U.S. manned aircraft. Uh, we could use Patriot missiles, uh, Patriot batteries and cruise missiles to take out their air and to supply the, uh, the resistance with weapons. Matt, what do you think of McCain's approach? I think he has been spot on since the very beginning of the conflict. And I think he recognizes that as time goes on, our uh, options are diminishing and they just become far and far worse. Uh, he's also been saying, uh, and it's something that I've said on this show since the beginning of the uprising as well, that the further we go on, the worse the options become, the harder it is for the United States to do something. And in the end, we're going to have to do something, so it's better to have done it earlier on. Now, now you, ad you addressed this issue in an op-ed published today in the Huffington Post. Here's an excerpt, quote, Today, well-funded jihadist and Islamic forces have hijacked the revolution. By sitting on the sidelines, Washington has contributed to an outcome that guarantees continued ethnic cleansing, end quote. Are you suggesting that it's already too late? I'm suggesting that before there was not a terrorist group, Jabhat al-Nusra, aligned with al-Qaeda, fighting against the regime within Syria. I'm suggesting that foreign jihadists were not a lead element before, and that today they absolutely are, and they're being funded and trained and equipped by Saudi Arabia and Qatar. In the meantime, we're not equipping any team or any side, so we are not having influence. So as time drags on now, we are not going to be able to influence the outcome. With 80,000 people dead, there's going to be reprisals. For instance, if this conflict were to end now, and Assad were to leave, that does not guarantee an end to the civil war. It simply means Assad would be gone. There would be reprisals going on for years to come, likely, and with the United States so far powerless to be able to do anything to get either side to stop. 
What's your website and how can we follow you? You can follow me at thejewishpolicycenter.org or matthewrjbrodsky.org or .com and uh, at the JPC is our Twitter handle. Always in enjoy your insight. Thank you, Matt. Matt Brodsky with the Jewish Policy Center. Thank you. Well, we're going to take a quick break now, but even when we're not on the air, you can follow us on the web.